They're worried about all kinds of masculine changes. And that way, puberty blockers, which are completely reversible and don't have permanent effects, are wonderful because we can put that pause on puberty. Just like if you were listening to music, you put the pause on and we stop the blockers and puberty would go right back to where it was. The next note in the song just delayed that period of time. You can just pause puberty. No, you can't and then pick it up no, you can't. for the future. No, you can't. How many studies do they have, long-term studies, on hormone blockers with children? None. I just spoke a month or two ago with a mother whose 14-year-old daughter was put on blockers. They discovered after two years, this 14-year-old girl has osteoporosis. That's something that, like, old women get. How can doctors assure parents that a certain medicine is totally safe? If based on what you're saying, they can't possibly know that. How can they be sterilizing kids? How can this whole thing be happening, Matt? What other piece of evidence do you need to see to understand fifth generational warfare being practiced right now at the top intellectual institutions of this country? What else do you need to see? Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org. And there is a lot of absolutely crazy news to get into, not only geopolitically, not only with the price of energy going up, but more turmoil in Europe, as even the New York Times has conceded on a point that we've been making for a very long time. Things are getting crazy, they're getting more ridiculous, as many people are expecting a conflict here domestically. What's going on? We're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more, all on this independent media broadcast. But before we get into it, the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was a small segment from a new documentary by The Daily Wire that is called What is a Woman? It is creating a lot of buzz, a lot of very important conversations that I think are long overdue. Some would say are showing the regression of our society, but I think also more importantly, showing the lunacy at some of the most top prestigious intellectual institutions of the United States. The lady in the beginning of this video was a pediatric professor. And, and I think it's fair to say that what's happening in this country is crazy and it's going to get a lot crazier, especially with the economic turmoil that a lot of us will be facing, especially over the next few weeks where gas prices are still expected to rise and be higher than already. The record high prices that we are dealing with, this of course is going to be affecting everything in the supply chain. There's a new term created for this. It's called Biden inflation, since, of course, this administration has been making energy and policy decisions that have been directly responsible for the larger economic calamities that we are dealing with. We're also going to be talking about the international perspective about gas prices in just a little bit, specifically with the latest news coming out of Russia. But your government right now is taking your money and literally handing it out to multinational corporations, not just through congressional bills, but through secret bailouts with the U.S. Federal Reserve, a quasi-private banking institution that literally right now is creating socialism for the super rich, making sure their losses are covered with your money, while, of course, you get left out to dry. As, of course, former chairmen of the Federal Reserve and now Treasury secretaries like Janet Yellen are coming out and admitting that they lied to to you when they said inflation was quote transitory everyone knew that was a bunch of lies when, when, when she said it we called it out here on this independent media broadcast being like these people are crazy these people are delusional you look at the numbers you look at the spending you look at all the things that the government is putting their hands into messing up there's no way that inflation could be transitory that's exactly almost what we told you months ago we were right as jenna yellen admitted that she was wrong it's also important to note here that the u.s corporate media regarding regurgitated these talking points as if they were gospel. They kept telling you that it's only going to be temporary. It's only going to be transitory. That it's actually going to be good for you. That it's actually going to raise wages. That it's actually going to be beneficial for the poor. And that to me is absolute lunatic kind of thinking that of, sure, that of course we questioned as independent media, but still somehow major multinational corporations were able to get away with this lie and not be held responsible for it. And hey, they were even promoted for it by the big tech social media algorithms that of course are pushing their voices and punishing anyone correctly calling out the correct situation that we're dealing with right now. With financial turbulence ahead, with poverty increasing, people become more desperate, you could expect more crime, you could expect more social turbulence that will be matched 
matched with the economic turbulence. And this is what a lot of people expect as we, as we have a new poll by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is an institution that shouldn't be trusted, that lied publicly, that was sued successfully for slander for defamation, came out with a poll saying that 44% of Americans believe that this country is headed towards a civil conflict between each other. 53% of Republicans, 39% of Democrats, according to this poll, believe that that is the case. And I, I think it's fair to say that there is a larger divide and conquer agenda that has been worsened by, of course, the federal government's actions that has been using their power undiplomatically in order to punish their political opponents. And I think it's fair to say that things are getting a bit crazy here in the United States, as, of course, the U.S. federal government is planning on disarming a large population of law-abiding citizens in this country. This is from the same administration and, and more accurately, the same person that at the helm of government, whether when he was the vice president or now the current president, literally armed radical militant groups in the Middle East inside of Ukraine, along, of course, with drug cartels, which were done under official U.S. programs that, that took your money bought weapons and literally handed it over to some of the most dangerous elements within our society. Your tax dollars went to arming and funding some of the most dangerous individuals on the face of this world. And now the same government, the same individual that did that wants to take away your ability to defend yourself. Yeah, sorry, that's a barter that I do not wish to participate in and I think is absolutely ridiculous to call for, especially with the horrible extensive record by the executive office to not do the right thing. And sadly, there are some nasty politicians out there that see tragedies as a way to get political support for themselves, like individuals like Beto O'Rourke, which there's alleged footage and audio of him saying that whenever there is a tragedy, it now helps. And when you're starting to think from that kind of perspective, you have lost all moral ground. Speaking out against a lot of this nonsense, no matter who you are, is a risk, especially to your ability to do so, as, of course, big tech social media giants have been punishing and censoring any counter narratives to the official government story about how we should not be trusted with any kind of responsibility for ourselves. Individuals that are clearly just making the argument that, hey, as an individual, as a human being, I have a right to defend myself. I have a right to be personally responsible for myself and my family are literally being censored. This as we are slow crawling into despotic totalitarian regimes like the people of Canada have to deal with, where still, still to this date, if you didn't participate in a larger experiment, if you didn't take a medical procedure that ma manufacturers have no liability from, you are still not allowed to travel outside of Canada. Yes, in, in Canada, there are border restrictions for individuals who are not compliant with a big pharma medical procedure that the government there wants you to take. All of this as China is becoming more free in, 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 in this particular instance compared to Canada, as of course they just got rid of their Shanghai lockdown, one of the strictest lockdowns that of course were cheered on with their stamp of approval by individuals like Bill Gates that have complimented China along with the World Economic Forum at doing, quote, a good job. As of course, tens of millions of people were literally isolated, many of them starved, denied basic access to human rights, as the scientific data even highlighted no need for a lot of this security theater nonsense. And again, the people of Shanghai were just temporarily released from their government control. How long will that last? How long will they be able to move around freely? How long will they be able to buy groceries? Well, who knows with the totalitarian state that literally controls every aspect of their life with the social credit score. A social credit score that, of course, some people want to bring back here into the United States, which specifically we are going to be talking about on LukeUncensored.com, as I think it's already fair to argue that there already is a social credit score. It is, it is a corporate one. It is a secret one. It is one that, of course, they do not want you knowing about. We're going to be talking about that, plus some important context and videos about potential food shortages coming to this country. What's going on here? Lots to discuss, lots to talk about, 
We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more right after this video on LukeUncensored.com, a platform where you get exclusive merchandise, a forum so we could all talk to each other, and access to really cool things that, of course, you could only get as a member of LukeUncensored.com. If you haven't signed up yet, sign up right now, as, of course, your support also goes for treats for Atlas, which is in the background of, of this video. <laughs> treats that are becoming more and more expensive by the day, as, of course, we're dealing with record high energy prices record high gas prices that are only expected to go up from here as of course we are still going into peak driving season and with more demand less supply this of course will not only affect you at the pump if you want to go to a certain location or if you want to go on vacation or if you want to drive somewhere this is going to affect the price of your groceries the price of your goods the price of things you want shipped and mailed to you everything is correlated with energy prices and this administration has literally been stopping exploration, discovery, and domestic energy production, all in the name of the environment, while, of course, relying on Saudi Arabia to import all of their energy for us to use, all in the name of a green policy, which is absolutely insane. But in surprising news, we also got the development today that OPEC is going to be raising their output of energy this as there have been more attacks against russian energy on the world market which of course is creating more of a demand less of a supply and increasing prices prices that have been increasing even before the conflict in ukraine the situation there of course is making this that much worse but this has been in the works for a very long time this as the conflict in ukraine is heating up to very serious proportions this as the russians have been making some significant headway in the donbass region we're getting reports from the Wall Street Journal that thousands are fleeing the frontline towns that the Russians are taking over, that they're advancing in. The Ukrainian government has admitted that they're losing up to 100 Ukrainian soldiers every day in the Donbass region. The U.S., of course, just sent new rocket launchers to Ukraine, which could hit inside of Russia. Some military analysts say that this is little too late and it won't change the tide of this particular conflict. This, as we're reaching a key moment for this entire conflict this as we're reaching a key moment in this conflict that will determine its future all of course as there is a significant loss on both sides 500 soldiers are reported wounded almost every single day from the ukrainian side this is also happening partly because the ukrainians are also on the offensive in some places and of course leaving themselves more vulnerable the russians are depending on shelling of a lot of these areas and Sadly for the people of Ukraine, sadly for all the innocents lost here, the battle continues with no end in sight. As the New York Times just recently wrote a very interesting opinion piece, something, of course, that we've been talking about for a very long time since the beginning of this. Even before the war in Ukraine, we were telling you that this is a very serious situation that of course could start off a conflict that would not end and would only expand from here we told you from the very beginning mainstream media telling you oh it's only going to be a few days no we told you this conflict was going to last a lot longer it's going to last years it could potentially last 10 years it could potentially even last longer than that and with that and with the escalations it only endangers not only the innocent people of ukraine but also everyone else in Europe and the world. This opinion piece in, in the New York Times admits that this conflict could be, quote, impossible to stop and is actually shifting the blame towards the United States for prolonging this conflict by arming the Ukrainian soldiers in a way only to prolong this conflict further, diminishing any possibilities of a ceasefire or peace talks, specifically even highlighting how the current president of France, Emmanuel Macron, says that with the actions from the United States, it is, quote, sleepwalk sleepwalking into a war with Russia. Now, of course, every country plays their role in this larger escalation. Russia did start this conflict, while some argue, like the New York Times is, that the United States played a significant role in it, especially supporting the uprising in 2014 that has led us to this situation. Lots of history to understand, lots of complications, but essentially, at the end of the day, who does this conflict benefit? No one. 
except for the military industrial complex that of course is selling weapons selling missiles and building up a future boogeyman and conflict that of course looks like there is no end in sight to as of course the u.s government is openly bragging about using intelligence in order to assassinate high-level russian military figures the nsa today is bragging about the, how about how the united states is waging an offensive hacking operation against the russians the russians keep threatening nuclear war especially with their state-run television programs talking about the Satan 2 missile systems that we talked about previously on this broadcast. And this leaves me all thinking about why? Why? W what for? Some political aspirations of old sociopaths? No, thank you. This whole conflict, this whole situation is is stupid. The, the, the life lost here is not worth it, in my opinion. And instead of escalating and prolonging this conflict, I think there should be smart, intelligent, diplomatic efforts to try to cease this larger escalation and to prevent any further life loss that's my particular take on it that's my opinion that's what i think we should prioritize especially with our foreign policy especially if 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 we if, if the country is going to be making a stand against violence that that's just common sense to me and if you think i'm wrong and if you think I assess the situation in, in a totally incompetent way. Let me know why down in the comment section below. I, I, I appreciate the perspectives. I appreciate the input, but, but I don't see any other perspective than the one that I am right now, especially with all the things at stake here that are on the line and continue to put us in danger of just more economic turmoil, at least. The economic turmoil, guaranteed. And that's the least of our problems when it comes to the larger possibility of this entire situation getting completely out of hand. It's already out of hand in my opinion. And if you agreed with that opinion, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever. Even if it's just someone randomly messaging you from high school, you don't feel like responding to them. You don't feel like talking, doing the whole small talk thing. Send them this video right now. And because you do, I'm still able to be here. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. Watch it right now by clicking the link down in the description below. I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on WeAreChange.org.